I like to come up here at this time of the year and hear the birds. I guess they call them Canadian honkers, Canadian geese that you're hearing flying in formation as they're about ready to get started for their annual migration south. Why do animals migrate? Animals do not change their circumstances like humans. If we get cold, we can put on clothing. We who are city people can turn up the thermostat, put more heat on, if we get hot, we can turn on the air conditioner. Animals, of course, do not have that opportunity to change their surroundings. So instead, they've got to move to areas where the physical conditions are suitable. It's not just birds. People knows when and where to migrate. Where did they get their migratory instincts? Well, they got it, I believe, from God the Creator. The first example that I want to give you of migration Pacific salmon that are known as steelhead because of their gunmetal blue forehead. They hatch in Washington, Oregon, Idaho. They start growing up, they go into the ocean. Pacific salmon have been caught as far away as 3,000 miles, and that's more than halfway to Japan. After being out for a few years, they come back, they go up the river that they came from. For example, some come up the Columbia River. They have to ignore other rivers like the Deschutes River. And finally they get to the Snake River. The question of how they find their way is really a mystery. They also have a lot of obstacles on their way. They have a map here showing how far these salmon go. And they have a lot of obstacles, such as a lot of falls they have to climb, a lot of ladders they have to climb. They have bears and other predators they have to escape. They have fishermen they have to escape. And they keep on going, and they finally get back to the place where they were originated, and then they lay their eggs, and another generation comes along. Another example of migration of butterflies. Many of them start in central Mexico and they go as far as Canada. Their journey is estimated to be about 1,800 miles. It's very unusual about the butterflies. Is on their way, a new generation hatches and passes away. By the time they get to Canada, it may be as many as several generations that are born and bred and die before they reach Canada. Now, when autumn comes, then they start heading their way back to Mexico. What is so amazing is not the same butterflies that left Mexico that are returning. You may have five, six generations later. How do these butterflies who've never been there before, how they know to get back to their exact place in Mexico? It's not a case of remembering because they've never been there before. Birds are probably the most observed and studied of all the migration patterns. It is interesting, Solomon had wisdom in many areas. He sought out wisdom. You find him talking about a lot of things, conies, spiders, ants, and so forth. He must have been quite a biologist. He made this statement, the winter is past, the time of the singing of birds has come and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land, referring to the fact that the birds were starting to migrate up there during the springtime. Even Jeremiah said, Yea, the stork, the crane, and the swallow observe the time of their coming, but my people know not the judgment of the Lord. That's quite a powerful statement because really what that's saying in some way, some of these birds are smarter than some of us. I'm going to give you some examples of some migration. This particular bird that we're talking about now is the Arctic tern. And the Arctic tern goes all the way from the Arctic, all the way south to the Antarctic and back. That's from way up the North Pole to way down to the South Pole, back, and they go forth. The golden plover migrates from Alaska to Hawaii. It's a non-stop flight. It flies from Alaska across the ocean 
all the way to Hawaii. The flight is over 4,000 kilometers, approximately 2,800 miles. The flight takes 88 hours, so you're talking about four days nonstop. They estimate it takes 250,000 wing beats. There's probably no creatures on earth that are as athletic as the birds. What Olympic athlete could make 250,000 consecutive strides of their leg? Some of these creatures lose up to half their weight in a, a trip. It'd be quite a way to lose weight, wouldn't it? But think of the problems as far as energy is concerned. How does a bird know how far it's going to go? How does it know how much fuel it's going to need? And of course the fuel is usually obtained by storing fat. How does it know? Uh, obviously it doesn't want to load up too much because if you had a, too fat a bird, you know, it wouldn't even be hard to be able to take off. On the other hand, if it had too little fat, it wouldn't have enough energy to get there. So how does it know how to arrange just the right amount of fat before the journey? So this is what is called the miracle of energy for it to somehow know how much it's going to need. It also has to choose the right speed, the most economical cruising speed. If it flew too slowly, if there for instead of four days, seven days, it would be using up too much energy just staying airborne. On the other hand, if it tried to get there in three days, it would waste too much energy overcoming air resistance. Also, how do the birds know how to fly in a V formation? That's estimated that it saves 23% energy by flying in a V formation. How does it know how to do that? Well, this, as I said, is called the miracle of energy. And then there's the navigational miracle. How does the bird know the way? It doesn't have any compasses. It doesn't have any maps. It doesn't have any instruments. If the bird was only slightly off course, it's got to find Hawaii. If it would be like five degrees off, it would miss Hawaii and it'd end up in the open ocean dying and that would be the end of the golden plovers. Now, it also has to not just start off in the right direction, but there are constantly changing conditions. The winds are blowing, they could drift them off course. You're not, you know, all sunny days, cloud cover, so forth. So how does it know what directions to go Sometimes our birds are flying for the first time. That we call a navigational miracle. Some other examples of migration and birds. Is, there are some species of tern. This is a particular type of bird. They took places from 832 to 1360 kilometers. That's equivalent of about 500 miles. Within a few days, most return to Tortugas Islands. Another experiment was performed on the Max Shearwater. This is probably the longest disorientation experiment. They took some of these from whales over in the British Isles to Boston. The one that they took there, it arrived back in 12 days, 12 hours, 31 minutes, after a 5,000 kilometer non-stop flight. Take it over 3,000 miles, took it out of its natural pattern, took it to the United States, it found its way back in 12 days flying non-stop. That's amazing, isn't it? Really. The wandering albatross, they did an experiment on that. They took them from Midway. This is an island that's got its name Midway because it's sort of like Midway between North America and Asia. They took it to various places. They took actually 18 of these albatrosses, took some to Japan, took some to the Philippines, they took some to the Marianas, they took some to the Marshall Islands, they even took some to Hawaii. 
and to the state of Washington in the United States. The albatross from Washington traveled 3,200 miles. The one from the Philippines, 4,120 miles. Of the 18 albatrosses that they took, 14 returned back to Midway. That's a pretty high percentage, taking them to places they'd never gone before. Now you're probably familiar with what's called homing pigeons. They have done probably more experiments on homing pigeons than any others trying to confuse these birds. For example, they have anesthetized them, you know, put them, drugged them and took them away while they were in a drug state. Others, they put in rotating cages, some with mirrors, some with magnetic fields and so forth, trying to confuse them. And it's amazing that these birds were just as able to find their way home as the control birds if they didn't do that. They've got to have some kind of special sense of geographical position and a determination of their journey and how to get there, even though they have been subject to these disorientation experiments. Now, why do we talk about this in the creation versus evolution course? The Creator must have given these birds this kind of, and other animals, this kind of map sense. They still don't know for sure how they know their way. Some people have suggested rising sun. Some people have suggested star patterns. But again, as I mentioned, they find their way even when it's cloudy. Some have suggested that odors from pine trees help them, but again, that some of them have never been their way, may not know that. Some have suggested that the sounds generated by the winds helps direct them. And others feel like they somehow sense the magnetic field of the earth. Now when they get off course, there's got to be some kind of a feedback system how that navigational system works, nobody knows except the Creator. Migration to me is a miracle. It's put there by the Divine Creator. This type of instinct, migratory instinct, just could not have evolved.